Gas and oil prices are rising astronomically for Americans. And you've probably heard that these record high gas prices are Joe Biden's fault. These aren't Putin prices. They're President Biden's prices. Joe Biden, with his very weak policies and his policies to undermine American energy, essentially named Vladimir Putin as his secretary of energy. That prices would be lower if we hadn't canceled the Keystone Pipeline. We should have built that pipeline. I still think we should be able to build that pipeline and have that product coming from Canada. Or that rising prices simply can't be stopped unless Russia halts its invasion. Somehow, fossil fuel companies, which are all making record profits, have avoided any blame in this crisis. We monitored corporate earning calls, searched through corporate financial reports, and dug into the oil giant's history with Putin and we found some startling evidence of what's really behind skyrocketing gas prices. Oil and gas executives, who have been some of Vladimir Putin's closest partners for years, are cashing in on Russia's war and using it to boost their bottom line at the expense of working class Americans. Let us explain. Even before Russia invaded Ukraine, big oil giants Shell, Chevron, BP, and Exxon were taking advantage of inflated prices to make a combined $75.5 billion in profits. Now, extraordinary times call for extraordinary measures, and we made 2021 a momentous year for Shell. In 2021, while Americans were struggling to pay gas bills and other basic necessities, fossil fuel CEOs were celebrating their biggest profit increase in at least seven years. We expect to generate over $100 billion in excess cash flow. Our adjusted earnings were some $19 billion for the year. By the end of 2021, we had one of our most successful years ever. You would think that record profits would mean oil companies are ramping up domestic productions to weather the storm after America banned Russian oil imports. But oil companies have no intention of increasing production. The CEO of British Petroleum himself said in an investor call last year that oil and gas companies have more than enough leases and drilling permits. Instead, big oil companies have actually been restricting production to maximize cash profits for investors. The oil industry is making all this money. Does the industry have an obligation to the public to pump more oil? No, obviously not. Uh, we're just going to return more cash back to the investor. And this strategy has been working. Since 2015, U.S. oil giants ConocoPhillips, Chevron, Devon Energy, ExxonMobil, and Hess have paid out $200 billion to shareholders in dividends and stock buybacks. That's more than double the amount they paid to the U.S. and foreign governments in taxes. As a result of our restored financial strength, we increased the annual dividend for the 39th consecutive year and announced a $10 billion share repurchase program. Our record-free cash flow enabled us to strongly address all four of our financial priorities in 2021. A higher dividend for the 34th consecutive year and another year of share buybacks. Clearly, if prices are higher, yeah. there are and is the opportunity for uh, increased buybacks. This year, Big Oil is on track to send a near record $88 billion back to shareholders through buybacks and dividends. It's nearly double the stock buybacks completed in 2014. Oil executives are lining their own pockets too. Since the buildup to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, just five CEOs of major oil companies have made $99 million from selling their shares. But the war in Ukraine isn't just a cash cow for big oil. It's actually a crisis that fossil fuel executives helped create in the first place. Oil companies like ExxonMobil may be announcing that they're halting oil production in Russia now, but Exxon and other US-based fossil fuel giants have worked closely with Russian President Vladimir Putin for years to lobby against US sanctions on Russia, violate sanctions to work with Putin's allies, and block solutions that would have reduced the world's dependence on Russian oil and gas. In 2011, Exxon struck a major deal with Rosneft, Russia's state-owned oil company, expanding production in the Russian Arctic and giving Rosneft access to oil and gas in the U.S. The deal was so important to Russia that Putin attended the signing ceremony himself. Two years later, Vladimir Putin awarded ExxonMobil CEO Rex Tillerson, future Secretary of State, the Order of Friendship, 
one of the highest honors that Russia gives to foreign citizens. When Russia first invaded Ukraine in 2014, instead of pulling out of the project, Exxon lobbied Congress, the State Department, and Treasury to delay sanctions until they could finish drilling. We had a friend who happened to be chair of, of a very powerful committee who was able to step in front of, the, of, of, of this, what we call the runaway train, and was able to use a political maneuver to slow it down. Exxon knowingly violated sanctions on Russia to work with the Russian state-owned oil company Rosneft on oil and gas projects. And Exxon is not an outlier. Shell and BP work with Putin-controlled oil and gas companies Rosneft and Gazprom, and Chevron has a 15% stake in the Russian-owned Caspian pipeline. Valero is one of the largest importers of Russian oil, along with Exxon. The same fossil fuel executives that got us into this mess are not the ones who can get us out of it. Fossil fuel companies want you to think that the only way to stop Russia is to increase domestic production. But in fact, we need to do exactly the opposite and move away from fossil fuels entirely. Thankfully, there's an energy source that hasn't been impacted at all by Russia's war in Ukraine, and that's wind, solar, and green energy. Loosening environmental regulations or pulling back clean energy investment won't, let me explain, won't, will not lower energy prices for families. But transforming our economy to run on electric vehicles powered by clean energy with tax credits to help American families winterize their homes and use less energy, that will, that will help. And if we can, if we do what we can, it will mean that no one has to worry about the price of gas pump in the future. We need a radical transition to clean energy that doesn't leave the U.S. economy vulnerable to foreign dictators like Putin or petro-oligarchs in our own country. And in the meantime, we also need a tax on windfall oil profits to stop price gouging by oil and gas corporations and provide Americans immediate relief at the gas station. The windfall profits tax introduced by Senator Sheldon Whitehouse and 11 other Senate Democrats would take fossil fuel companies' excess profits and actually return that money directly to working Americans via monthly checks. So if oil were $120 a barrel, Democrats estimate this would raise $45 billion a year and send 360 bucks back to families. Look, we get it, supply and demand, that prices go up, but profit margins should not go up. That's just oil companies gouging.